Hello friends, this video on polymers part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to explain the terms monomers, polymers and poly polymerization and also their importance. We will also try to distinguish between various polymers and different polymerization process. We will appreciate the formation of polymers from the mono and bifunctional monomer molecules. We will describe the preparation of some important synthetic polymers and also their properties. And lastly, we will appreciate the importance of the polymers in our daily life. So let's start with the chapter. The first question that comes to our mind is what are polymers? The chapter is all about polymers. See, poly means what? Poly means many. You see, poly means many. And mars means unit or part. Many part, many unit. That is called polymer. So, polymer is nothing but a large molecule because it has many units. It's the large molecules, also called macromolecule. See, when you, talk, when you say micromolecule, you talk about small molecule. When you talk about macromolecule, you talk about huge molecule like this. If you see, the huge molecules consist of small, small micromolecules. So, polymers are nothing but macromolecules. Okay? It consists of repeated units. And these repeated units are called monomers. See, polymers, instead of poly, if you use this word mono, and mer is the same word, you get this mers, monomers. So, many monomers will give you polymers. So, N monomers will give you one polymer. You will see this. It's in reactions to understand this. Just understand this term polymers means many unit, monomer means one unit. So basic building block of polymer is monomer. So polymer is nothing but is a macromolecule which has repeated units and this repeated unit is called monomer. And typically the molecular mass of polymer is very high. Molecular mass of polymer is something around 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 7 units. It's very very high. Very high molecular mass. And we'll talk about molecular mass. We'll tell you why molecular mass is not of much significance. We'll talk about average molecular mass in case of polymers. We'll discuss that. Okay. So let's define this term polymer now. Polymer is nothing but very large molecule having high molecular mass formed by joining repeating structural units on large scale. And these repeating structural units are called monomers. And these monomers are linked by covalent bond. So there are so many terms actually which are critical in this definition. The first one is very large molecule that is macromolecules. Molecular mass very high formed by joining repeated, repeated structure unit called monomers and these repeating structure units monomers are joined by covalent bond. Okay. So let's again, let me repeat once again. Very large molecules with a molecular size of almost 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 7 units formed by joining repeated structural units called monomers and these are joined by covalent bond and that is the definition of polymers. If you see in this case this is a repeating unit and they are joined by bond. This whole thing maybe thousands of these joined together will be one polymer. In this case also, if you see, if you see detail, you will find that there is one unit which is getting repeated. This is actually the, the protein, but this is protein, this is enzyme actually. Yeah. But actually if you see at the micro level, there is a repetition involved here also. So these are polymers. Okay. Poly means many, many units. Basic building block is monomer. Monomer is single unit. So one single unit monomer creates that is the definition of polymer. Now the question is why should we study polymer? So you see polymer has a huge application in our day to day life. If you talk about the hot bag, the toothpaste, in toothpaste also if you see there are different kinds of polymers. This 
wrapper is something which is soft, you can squeeze it, right? It's a different kind of polymer. The toothbrush, this handle is hard. This is a different kind of polymer. The bristles here has a different property. It has high tensile strength, but still soft. So this is also a different kind of polymer. So you see in toothpaste and toothbrush itself, you have three different kinds of polymers. Rubber is a kind of polymer, it's soft. The switches we have in our home, that is also a polymer that is hard. The threads we use, the nylon threads we use, that is polymer. The rubber stamp, the rubber in this is polymer. The rope we use, the different kind of polymer. You see, the rope again has a different property. It has to be, it should not be very hard, but it should have very high uh, strength. These handles which we use in the cooking utensils, the cooker or the other cooking utensils, these handles are very hard and they are non conductor of electricity. These are different kind of polymers. You see, sometimes we use a plastic hair. These are polymers, different kind of polymers. These are also polymers sometimes. The coating of the wire is again a polymer. The plastic, the polythene, is a famous polymer. The enzymes and the proteins in the body is a polymer. The wool, the synthetic wool, a lot of uh, application of synthetic wool now, most of the dress or most of the woolen clothes we wear is all synthetic wool. That is again a polymer, different kind of polymer. The comb we use, most of them are polymer. Very few you will find a wooden comb, but typically we use plastic comb. The dress material we use, the t-shirts and all that has nylon in it and acrylic in this. These are all polymer, acrylic, nylon. The, the, the bottle we use is a polymer. If you, see, if you see, this is also polymer and both have different properties. In fact, in bottle also you see there are three different kind of polymers used and all these three will have different properties. This will be, you can squeeze it a little bit. This is very hard, this point, and this is very sharp. These are three different kind of polymers. The toys has polymer. The badminton, this uh, threads which you have here is a polymer. And that has a very good property that it has to be, uh, has very, should have very high tensile strength. This is also polymer, threads. The melamine, the melamine plates we use in the home, that is almost unbreakable. That is polymer. The paints we use is polymer. The shoes are typically made of polymers. The tent cloth, it is waterproof. It is polymer. The rainbow, the raincoat is polymer. The umbrella we use is polymer. The bucket we use is polymer. The screwdriver, if you see this handle is polymer. This boat, these they use this uh, uh, cloth hair for sailing, right? Sail. This is polymer. The tire is polymer. A lot of things around us is polymer. If you talk about computers, computers cabinet, a lot of things in the computers uh, in polymer. The mobile phone, the whole case of the mobile phone, right? The film of the mobile phone, the curve of the mobile phone, all of things polymer in front of us. So the plastic shears we use again polymer. If you see around you, so many huge, huge application of polymers in our day to day life. The app, the polymers has actually changed our life. But actually it has uh, impacted environment also because most of these polymers are non-biodegradable. And this is impacted, I'll say most, not all, because now we have developed biodegradable polymer also, but most of these example polythene is a non-biodegradable polymer. And this thing, since it is non-biodegradable, it is not degraded by the environment on its own and it adds the pollution and it doesn't degrade easily. So it causes a lot of environment pollution and that for that we have developed, the chemists have, the scientists have developed the biodegradable polymer. So we'll study about all these things. We'll study about all these polymers and we'll study about the way we classify these polymers because you see there are different kinds of polymers with different property. The property of a tire is different from the property of a plastic. In the toothpaste and toothbrush itself, I told you the property of these bristles is different from the handle, from the wrapper, right? The property of the wool is different, the property of the comb is different, the property of the stent is different, the property of the bucket is different. So each of these have different properties. It is good to understand these polymers. So we'll try to explain in this chapter, we'll first classify these polymers into different types based on the source, based on the properties, 
and do your stuffs. And then we'll try to uh, explain the preparation of some of these polymers and uh, about the impact of these polymers in this environment and how the biodegradable polymers can help us to minimize this impact. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.